Hi, my name is Dominic and in this short video quick tip tutorial about sound design I want to show you how you can turn a simple brown noise sound which sounds like this into a Geiger counter sound which sounds like this. I have to say that I stumbled upon this trick accidentally while I was working on my free sample pack 107 free retro game sounds and I was experimenting a little bit with a bit crusher and with white noise and then I stumbled upon this trick which I want to show you in this video. So let's turn the Geiger counter off and let's start with a brown noise. So this is our basic signal that we will work with. I tend to work with Massive, but you can work with any program or synthesizer which is able to create a brown noise signal. So here you can see it down below. It's the section right here, um, just the noise section. And I think almost nothing else going on. I also turned on the feedback I'm not sure if I really need this. I don't think it makes a big difference. Um, what I discovered is when I now use a bit crusher on this signal, let's open it and let's bypass it. So this is the original sound without. Let's turn the bit crusher on and let's Turn up the sample divider. Yeah, distortion. And then next step that I want to do is I want to bring the depth down, the bit resolution. And what you can hear is a little bit, it is like grain synthesis or granular synthesis, um, where you really can hear the short grains. You don't hear the cloud. Oftentimes, um, white noise or brown noise, or any kind of noise is like a cloud that you hear. But when you, res when, when you um, bring down the bit resolution, you really can hear the little grains, the little clicks, the more you, um, the more you disturb the signal. And the next thing that I want to show you is that I can even manipulate with the color section the number of clicks. So if I bring down the color, there are almost no clicks. And if I bring it up, many clicks. Let's keep that in mind. And... Um, I think that's it for the bit crusher. Well, here in Cubase, I have four modes and I think the third is the best one. Let me check. I like to go for the third one. And the next thing you can see it here also on my um, insert channel is a is an eq a simple telephone preset to boost the mid-range frequencies here we have it and i bring down the gain to about 60 b just to um, control the, um, the gain so it's not too loud yeah i think i can bring that up I would just want to um, compare it with the one I have here. It's a little different. So let's let's take the the EQ settings from the original one. So it's basically the telephone preset with a mid boost, but certain frequencies are boosted more than others. 
Um, that's what I did. And as you heard, the sound sounds like this. Now it's getting closer to the Geiger counter sound. And the last thing that I did was a grungalizer, another plugin to distort a signal. It's more like a lo-fi plugin that Cubase has to offer. And here you have several options. I just want to bring down the hum, the noise and the crackle. We just need the distortion and the EQ. And I'll bring up the mix to 100% and I just bypass it without and with. And I think the, the magical um, ingredient here is the EQ knob. So we have the Geiger counter sound now, um, but it's a static sound. If I just render that um, sound out, um, it just would work for a certain amount of radioactivity, so to speak, because that instrument is used to measure radioactivity. And let's say you want to use, use this kind of sound in a movie about an apocalyptic um, whatever I don't know um, and there is a way of creating an automation for instance you want to uh, you have a camera movement so the the actor is moving closer to the um, to a certain spot where there's really a high radioactivity so you want to have this Geiger counter sound getting more and more intensive and this is what I'm gonna create now. I use a macro control in Massive and I label it as radio activity TVT and when I now play with this radioactivity knob, you can hear really that the clicks are going up and down. So here we are really close to the nuclear power station, which is broken or whatever. And then if we step a few steps back, the radioactivity decreases, so to speak. And let's draw in a little automation. I have the, the, the German terms here in Cubase because I am from Germany and I'm using the German version of Cubase. We're gonna take the... Oh, let me see. I think noise. Exactly, that's the... And then here we have the radioactivity macro control, which I just created in Massive. And let's say we'll start down here and bring it up and then bring it down again. So we're moving closer to the very dangerous zone. Restricted area. And then we're getting back home. <laughs> yeah, just a simple uh, demonstration of what you can do with the uh, um, automation curve because that's the way you can really um, interactively um, do a sound design for a film according to the camera movement. Yeah, so that's been it. That's a quick tutorial about how to turn a brown noise sound into a Geiger counter sound. Hope that helps. If you like this kind of video, give me a thumbs up and I would love to bring you more videos like this in the future.